So my foot's totally stuck in there, right? I'm freaking out. The dog's having a seizure. I still got half a pie left. Quicksilver seems to be one of the more powerful mutants in the X-Men movie franchise. He can basically view time at a standstill and do whatever he wants. The power of being able to move fast is hilariously broken in it of itself. What separates him though from a lot of the other speedsters is kinda what limits him from time traveling. He doesn't have the speed force. <laughs> it's basically what prevents the Flash from burning up due to running so fast and this weird cheek flapping. It's what gives them their powers. So without this source, Quicksilver can't go far into the past like the Flash or most of the Flashes could. But this also means he'd be unintentionally more destructive. Super speed often comes with a plethora of secondary powers, like increased stamina, a faster perception of time so they can see, and a bunch of other stuff. All speedsters have this. Be minor, all right, yeah! But because Quicksilver doesn't have that external force, that thing that stops him from burning up from traveling so fast, that's all him. The mutant gene gave him super durable skin and bones to make sure he wouldn't just die if he ran into something. Cause if you were traveling at speeds just past Mach 2 and you bumped into a random fly in the middle of the street, you'd probably just die, like instantly. In Days of Future Past, we see him take a leisure jog inside the Pentagon, outrunning bullets and toying with everybody. But we see him bumping into various droplets of water, which okay, seems pretty harmless. But they'd honestly kill you. At his speed, those innocent little drops of water would feel like bullets from pistols, giving off 65,000 pounds of force per square inch. There's videos on YouTube showing that it only takes 60,000 to cut through bulletproof glass and bulletproof vests. Which means Quicksilver's skin is much more durable and resistant than bulletproof glass and vests. So he should, I mean, he should be bulletproof. The next movie could say otherwise, but if he can survive taking multiple pressure points here, this version of Quicksilver should be bulletproof. If he does get injured by a bullet in Dark Phoenix, then... I don't know. And his powers get even more buffed up in Apocalypse, where he's 600 times faster than he was before. Believe it or not, that thing is traveling way faster than a speeding bullet. And it weighs a hell of a lot more than a raindrop. If he can flick that shrapnel away like that without his finger just exploding into thin air, then it'd mean his bones and skin would have to be literally over 9,000 times stronger than bulletproof Kevlar. <coughs> so you'd have to make sure you hit him really, really hard to actually hurt him. Another thing people also seem to forget is that he needs to generate a lot of force to get even past 300 miles per hour. This means, in a way, well, not in the way you'd think, but Quicksilver, as another secondary power, has some form of super strength. The fastest we've ever seen. The fastest we've ever seen him go in the X-Men movies was in Apocalypse, traveling over 8,000 times the speed of sound. This means that with every kick off the ground he made, it had to propel him well past the sound barrier. All of that power packed into the surface area of his foot would be devastating to whatever he was stepping on. Each step would be pushing out about 593,000 tons of force. That's as heavy as the heaviest ships in the world weigh in at. And that includes being fully packed with cargo and passengers. Just imagine that thing dropping on the ground, but thousands of times in a matter of literally one second. He'd probably be a cool guy to hang out with, but when he's working, it might actually make you want to kill yourself. With that much force, 5.5 magnitude earthquakes would be felt within miles of him. A few buildings might even start collapsing. And if he were ever to punch you at this speed, a shockwave within almost a mile would be felt. Glass windows would break. You would implode from the inside out. And, and a huge crater would be left behind. One that stretched 262 feet wide and ran nearly 33 feet deep. It'd be too fast for your eyes to even register what just happened. So you'd literally not even see, see him coming. coming. <laughs> but even though Quicksilver's most well known for going super fast, super speed isn't his only power. Like, at all. When you go back and look at all of the Quicksilver scenes we've gotten thus far, You'd think that without any sort of speed force, he should have just obliterated everyone and everything around him. Only his body is meant to be capable of handling high speeds. Everyone here should have died. 
they would have been vaporized because moving at even just 200 times the speed of sound would cause them to catch on fire. His other powers is what allows him to do all these crazy things with other people, without instantly killing them. He's able to poke this guy in the face and send him flying, yet he can tap this guy's scalp without giving him a brain hemorrhage. He can throw these assholes over thousands of times the speed of sound without breaking them. And all of this is because the two things that multiplies his power is his ability to control gravity and inertia. See, gravity is the thing that makes everything fall down at the same rate. If you dropped a penny and a brick from the same height, they'd fall down at the same speed because how much something weighs doesn't matter. Yet, we see numerous amounts of times where Quicksilver beats people to the ground. Sure, this one you could say, he kicked off of the wall to land on the ground faster. But there's nothing you could say for this one cause that, that's just not what should happen. Unless he could control gravitational forces. Now you're probably thinking, big whoop right? What's he gonna do with gravity anyways? How useful could that actually be? <laughs> gravity actually does a lot more than you might think. If you weaken it or strengthen it, it could indirectly slow down or speed up time itself. The stronger the gravitational pull is on you, the slower time goes by all around you. This would make sense since this Quicksilver, not the other Quicksilver, has a unique case. He's capable of going supersonic while already under the super speed perception. What's essentially happening is that he's making the gravitational pull on solely himself much stronger, while at the same time using his super speed powers to make himself super OP. Does that sound confusing? It's cause it is. It doesn't work in the way you'd think. He sort of subconsciously does it when he's messing with gravity. So it's not like he can control time itself. It, it's like breathing to us. We kind of forget we're doing it. We just do it. The same kind of applies to his power to control inertia. When people say, Oh yeah, uh, that, that should kill you. It's way too fast for him. That's not exactly true. It's not the speed that'd kill you. It's the acceleration that would. If your body goes to a sudden stop, or just suddenly accelerates to 99% the speed of light, your organs would just turn into juice. But if he can alter your internal inertial mass, then the trauma from acceleration becomes almost nothing. Okay, th that's not true. You'd probably feel like you've been through hell still. It'd still be there, but you'd be able to handle it. The combo of these two powers totally agrees with what we see. He can move things around without altering their paths. Like in the first movie he was in, this bullet should have flown far off to the right, and, and this one should have went through Xavier. But no, they follow a straight line as if they were never even interrupted. And again here, these guys would be flying much, much faster since they were catapulted over 250 times Earth's escape velocity. But no, it looks like they were just given a little shove so they could land safely into their hammocks. He can sort of choose whether or not his moves hurt you, even if it is just a pinky or both his hands. Or maybe even if my balls were in her face the whole <laughs> shot. Since space and time are warped in a weird way whenever he's moving people around and messing with gravity, burning up from moving so fast isn't really a problem anymore. Quicksilver himself is pretty heat resistant. I mean, you gotta be if you're gonna be running that fast and you can hold your finger out like that in front of an explosion. But everyone else isn't. If this gravity theory is true, that Quicksilver can play around with that push and pull from the center of the Earth, then it makes total sense why no one would burn up for moving over 8,000 times the speed of sound. See, things catch on fire when they're traveling incredibly fast in the atmosphere because of the air pressure built in front of the object. When air is compressed, its temperature rises until it eventually begins to burn. But air pressure isn't an issue if Quicksilver reduces gravity's pull on the people he's moving. Gravity is what's responsible for strong winds. As it compresses, air pressure is created. The less gravity has an effect on you, the less air pressure has an effect on you, and the less likely you'd be incinerated. So if he's got you, you're good. That is, if he likes you. If not, then I don't know. ultimately, Quicksilver may not be the fastest speedster out there, but he is one hell of a powerful one. Just moving as fast as he could would decimate people nearby leaving craters behind and rattling buildings. But it's his ability to control gravitational and inertial forces that makes him so much more powerful. Yeah, the super speed part itself already makes him almost untouchable, but that's dialed up to almost a thousand when he's controlling everything else around him. 
Like, think about it. Under that speed, everything is already virtually weightless. He could pick up the heaviest things in the world because gravity isn't an issue anymore, which is really just super strength in a different form. It's almost as if he can control time, but that's not exactly the case. And that's why Quicksilver is much more powerful than you think. Anyways, I want to ask you guys something. What do you think is the most broken superpower of all time? The answer to me is super speed because honestly, it comes with a bunch of secondary powers. Way too overpowered secondary powers. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like this video, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more of my videos, just click right here.